Hello, everyone. I am Zhao Chuan. Today, let's get to know Edward the Megalosaurus. Megalosaurus is the first dinosaur known to humans. It was excavated quite early, and its relevant early research was full of twists and turns. When people first discovered the fossils of Megalosaurus, the primary parts included the anterior bones of its mouth, several ribs, several dorsal vertebrae, a pelvis, which was mainly its side ilium, and the upper cervical vertebrae, a small partial leg, and a small portion of the tail. But people were jaw-dropped at the first sight of the Megalosaurus specimens. They had never imagined that such an animal once appeared on the earth, a reptile that ran on two legs, had very short arms, a huge head, and a long tail. Therefore, they believed that Megalosaurus was a monster that looked like a lizard at the time, and restored long limbs to it, thinking that it crawled on all fours. From the earliest restorations of Megalosaurus, we can see that it was shaped with an image like this, with a very sharp mouth. Although Megalosaurus was the first known dinosaur, under the conditions at the time, scientists also realized that the legs of this dinosaur were not the same as those of lizards. Their legs were perpendicular to the torso, not on both sides like lizards. So they thought that Megalosaurus might be a lizard with mammalian limbs, therefore, although the forelimbs in the early restorations were restored incorrectly, and it walked on all fours, its limbs were still under the torso. This is great progress, indicating that people had realized the uniqueness of these dinosaurs at that time. People restored a hump-like structure on its back then. Later, it was found that this structure did not belong to the Megalosaurus, which was caused by a mess-up with other skeletons during the restoration. This hump structure was later identified and described separately as another species called Bechelspinax, which is also a large carnivorous dinosaur. However, the few fossils make no clear research on which taxon it belongs to. It is likely believed to belong to the superfamily Allosauroidea, a member of Carcharodontosaurids, because a Carcharodontosaurid dinosaur called Concavenator had a similar structure on the pelvis. Some scholars believe that Bexophonax might have a small sail at the pelvis similar to Concavenator. Afterwards, as more and more dinosaurs were found, People realized that Megalosaurus was not what people imagined in the early days. It should be like the bipedal running dinosaurs unearthed later, such as Allosaurus and Tyrannosaurus rex. Only until recent decades, based on the large number of unsorted Megalosaurus fossils excavated before, people have pieced together a complete appearance of it, which is probably like this, because it was closely related to Torvosaurus, it also looked similar to Torvosaurus. First of all, Megalosaurus possessed very prominent and unique physical characteristics. Compared with other carnivorous dinosaurs, especially Allosaurus or Tyrannosaurus rex, its slender body shows a great difference. Its pubis was very short, and its ischium was not long either. The length of its whole torso was about the same as that of its pubis. Through this restoration, you can see that its body is relatively slender, its two legs were not very long, about a proportion like this, and it could run fast with the two legs. Some bones of its forelimbs have been found, but no claws. But for sure, its fingers did not degenerate into to like Tyrannosaurus rex. It was very likely to possess three fingers resembling the Allosaurus. Its forelimbs were restored entirely based on other dinosaurs, but the upper half of its arms were completely preserved which also shows a unique feature of the Megalosaurus. The fossils of the scapula and arm of Megalosaurus show that its arms were sturdy, especially the root part. When we restored it, the root of the arms was made quite sturdy, and became thinner and thinner towards the lower part. There were a large number of very massive muscles in the front of the arm, which can be seen from the relatively large muscle attachment points on the fossil. Its arms were well developed and robust when it was alive, then we start from the head and look at some details of the Megalosaurus. The known skull fossils of the Megalosaurus include this piece of its maxilla, a small part of the posterior of the head, and a relatively complete lower jaw. These fossils enable us to know that the anterior of its mandible is relatively round, which looks thick and strong. But the anterior of its upper jaw was not preserved, so we don't know whether it had a pointed or square mouth. Our current restoration adopts a way to make its face look more square. 
This appearance is a bit close to our current understanding of the Torvosaurus. On the top of the skull, like the Torvosaurus, it had to somewhat thick but lower bone structures. Its lacrimal horns were inconspicuous. Although Megalosaurus did not preserve the fossil of this part, we restored its lacrimal horns to be smaller, according to dinosaurs such as Torvosaurus. Its skull looks thicker, and if viewed from above, its head appears relatively narrow, with two eyes facing the sides. This is a very primitive structure, after all, Megalosaurus was more primitive than Allosaurids. In addition, its teeth were very well preserved, which was also a focus of early research. Many Megalosaurus teeth have been found. The most famous specimen at that time was a lower jaw and a partial upper jaw, which preserved very sharp teeth. At present, some relatively fragmented neck fossils of Megalosaurus have also been found, including several pieces of front bones and a few posterior bones. Because the bones are pretty fragmentary, we don't know how long the Megalosaurus neck is. However, based on the length of each bone and the number of cervical vertebrae in general carnivorous dinosaurs, we can infer its neck is about this long, which might be almost the same length as its skull. According to some early studies, based on the analysis of some suspected Megalosaurus neck materials, this dinosaur might have a very flexible neck. This might be the case, but we can't observe much information from the current definite specimens of Megalosaurus. Many early studies on Megalosaurus later found that the fossils they relied on did not belong to Megalosaurus. In those years, some so-called famous specimens of Megalosaurus were later named other dinosaurs such as Eustreptus pondylus. Next, let's talk about the ribs of Megalosaurus. People have discovered its rib fossils, which display that its ribs are relatively straight, and indeed not long. This made people think the body cavity of Megalosaurus might be slightly narrower than that of Tyrannosaurus rex. Some restorations restored the body of Megalosaurus very flat, because its rib fossils tend to be straight. However, this was likely caused by compression during a fossilization process, and the ribs might still have a relatively large arc when the Megalosaurus was alive. According to some specimens of other dinosaurs closely related to it, such as Torvosaurus, we believe this dinosaur still had a relatively sturdy body. Viewed from above like this, its body is somewhat rounded. Then, its pelvis was relatively square, its legs were very thick, and its legs were not long. Some early restorations often shaped the legs of carnivorous dinosaurs very long. Now, as we know more about dinosaurs, we believe that the legs of most carnivorous dinosaurs are not very long in proportion to the overall body. Of course, there are also some exceptions. For example, Gorgosaurus or Albertosaurus. Megalosaurus had a very long tail, which presumably accounted for about half the length of its body. The overall body of this dinosaur looks relatively slender. Regarding the skin of Megalosaurus, no fossils that can clarify what the skin of Megalosaurus looked like have yet to be unearthed. Therefore, we still speculate based on general carnivorous dinosaurs, such as Allosaurus. It might have a lot of delicate scales on its body. Then, it had the typical hind limbs of carnivorous dinosaurs, with three functional toes for walking, and a small toe. Good, the above concludes our introduction to Edward the Megalosaurus. Thank you all.